Transitioning into motherhood for most is probably one of the biggest transitions of someone's life. Obviously, I have not yet fully transitioned. I am still growing this little human in my belly right now, but there are a lot of questions and I think a lot of intentional conversations that can be happened about transitioning into motherhood, what that should look like, what is that going to look like from the perspective of a Christian woman like me who desires to live intentionally and so then desires to do all of the aspects of her life intentionally but also lives in our current culture and there's many different thought processes behind the different types of parenting techniques and sleeping techniques and feeding techniques and everyone is so divided on this so what are some things that i'm going to be doing as a new mom um and obviously i will follow up and say whether i followed through on some of those items or how that plays out because you have intentions but sometimes intentions do need to change still while being intentional with the change that's happening i just wanted to share some of those ways that i'm prepping to be a mom so the first question that i'm going to address is gonna be will you sleep train sleep training is one of those divisive topics with regards to babies that i know that so many people online are either completely for it or completely against it some of them are like this saved my marriage and some people are like you know what if i ever did this like you're abandoning your child and that's the only way to sleep train is by literally abandoning them and they don't know any better and so there is just so much division about this question that i do have a little bit of hesitancy answering it in short my husband and i have decided to sleep train now with this being said this is a conversation that we've had like when we were dating and when we were getting to know each other so i don't necessarily think that these are conversations that maybe if you have not had them with your spouse or significant other you need to be having these conversations because these are absolutely things that are going to have an impact on your life and so even if you are single or not married yet or you're in a relationship, be thinking of these questions and what your response to them might be so that that way when you are dating someone, you're able to be in alignment with them. We are going to sleep train basically at the nuts and bolts of it, but I think that there's going to be obviously grace within that and taking the child's individual needs and personality into effect. I've heard of mothers who they have a very calm, chill baby and that baby just sleeps through the night once it reaches eight weeks all by itself. And then other people like because they have to wake that baby up. I was a preemie and so my mom had to wake me up all of the time and be like, you need to keep eating <laughs> but some people like they're just a more fussy baby like they're just they have more attention and it might not be like that they need more attention it could be something else that's going on because of that i think it really is just taking each child's needs into consideration being intentional with the sleep training so if we were to sleep train like which we're planning on doing it would be a very intentional approach of like you know we're here but and you know like being like it's okay baby like we're here and still calming them and you know if they have fears and stuff but still being like okay i that doesn't necessarily mean that i'm gonna pick you up or feed you right now and helping them understand and learn okay like these are when we're gonna be feeding and these are when we're gonna be sleeping but just trying to take an intentional approach and knowing your baby and knowing what their specific needs are so trying to have that mindset as well what are you looking forward to for once baby comes i personally am looking forward to everything 
for once baby comes I am so excited to be a mom it's what I've always always wanted and obviously like with that being said I have not always sat there and thought oh being mom's like the easiest thing in the world and it's just a breeze and you know you just live your life and your kids love you all the time and they're just always happy no absolutely not I have never thought that it's not that I've wanted to be a mom because it's easy or because it's supposed to be like this just happy go lucky thing where everyone just smiles all the time and there's never fights and arguments I'm honestly looking forward to everything and even like in the conflict and even in the down the road disagreement and the like training understanding my baby's personality and my child's personality and just training them up in the way that they should go I think is just so important it's such a big you can just have such a big impact on someone's life and why would it not why wouldn't you want to have that I don't understand people who just don't want to become moms ever I'm like why would you not want to have such an impact and such a sanctifying impact on someone's life I don't understand it but I am everything every single thing I don't know about the crying I like am hesitant towards it as of right now I'm looking forward to even just like just I don't know that I'm necessarily like looking forward to the crying but I'm not hesitant about it either stop if you are enjoying this content don't forget to leave a like and go ahead and click that subscribe button so that you can see more content like this about living an intentional life rooted in God's Word how are you preparing for labor so this is a great question. I'm just trying to prepare primarily mentally. I listen to a lot of podcasts and then also like watch a lot of birth videos and I try to do also stretches and keep my body active so that that way when I am in labor, I, I kind of have, you know, like I'm just generally more strong in my legs and like in my body and so that way I kind of am used to getting strength training and just, you know, being like, okay, like let's, you know, push through this contraction. And then working on the mentality of just the mindset behind it of how women say like each contraction, it's like a wave. There's going to be a hard part, but you know that it's going to be over and working through that. And so I am actually excited for labor because it means it's closer to having my baby. <laughs> but I am actually really excited to work through kind of the pain management things that I've learned. And I'm not against, you know, using pain medications or an epidural if the if I'm just like so I, I have a very low pain tolerance in general so it could just be that that happens but I have noticed with things in my life like my anxiety over the pain tends to exasperate the pain so I'm really really trying to prep my mindset of let's not be anxious for this pain like let's just embrace it a lot of people are like oh you can just have a pain-free labor and you know that's great if people have done that I really don't think that that's gonna be the thing for me everything is painful for me like people poke me and I'm like this hurts I really don't think it's not gonna be painful for me I try I try just in like like if I get hurt now like sometimes you get hurt like you stub your toe or so, it's just a little thing but you're like sitting there and you think about it and then it hurts worse and you know so trying to like divert my mind will you be gentle parenting so my husband and I are not going to be gentle parenting the thing I think is interesting about gentle parenting is that there's no one who's a grown-up who like looked back yet and was like oh I was part of the gentle parenting movement right now everyone who's gentle parenting has like young children so we haven't seen the fruits of where gentle parenting leads, whereas there's many other parenting techniques where we've seen the fruits, we've seen the effects of that. And honestly, the Bible really, really informs us on how we can parent. And it, just like it informs us on everything about life. And so we will just be biblically parenting, I would say would be like my best analyzation of that. What books are you reading? I am reading a couple of books for 
just like prepping me for breastfeeding and then and then just like a pregnancy buff and then like I said I just listening to podcasts I don't necessarily know what the titles are for these but one of them is a natural guide to breastfeeding and so that's very much from the natural perspective ways that you can increase your supply and how you can get your baby to latch different things you can try with your baby how to tell if your baby's like tongue-tied I am excited for that that is one thing I'm really looking forward to is breastfeeding I am a little bit nervous that that's gonna be painful for me as well I mean they say nope it should never be painful M maybe in the beginning they say it could be painful but that it shouldn't be painful that you just have to work with it and grow unless the baby's latch is wrong and then it's a painful experience or unless something's like going on that shouldn't be I'll have to you know take that into consideration but I will say because I am so prone like su such a low pain tolerance it does worry me a little bit that breastfeeding will be painful I mean you do painful things in life like <laughs> you just do hard things in life for the benefit and obviously like I would be breastfeeding my baby um, to the best of my ability unless I ran out of milk. I'm reading that book so that that way I am prepared and that way I can tell like okay is my supply enough and you know is this that way you don't have to like sit there and worry. I'm sure I still will. I'm sure I still will sit there and be like oh my goodness I hope my supply is fine because I know that that's like a lot of mothers young mothers especially say I was so worried about my supply and we went out and supplemented and then I realized we didn't need to and then I lost some of my supplies. It could just be this whole chicken and egg thing, which came first type of deal. I'm really just trying to be educated about it and I will hopefully then do my best to keep my supply up and for at least a year breastfeed the baby and then I'm also reading a pregnancy just week by week book that kind of tells me where I'm at obviously what I was surprised about <laughs> the most about the book is like half of the chapter it will be like do you have like lupus during pregnancy year it's like these like one-off situations and I'm like, no, this isn't me. This isn't me. So I just skip those parts because you know what? Anxiety is not going to help you when you're pregnant. I'm like, why are they giving this to pregnant people? Well, if you have this thing like a pre-existing condition, like speak to your doctor about it. But I don't think we need to like add every single possible thing that could go wrong to a pregnancy book. I just don't think that's beneficial, but you know, that's just me. I just ignore it. I'm a fairly healthy person. Pregnancy is a normal, natural part of life. So that's a perspective that I am coming from. This is very natural. This is normal. I'm very healthy. I'm at the age that is best to have children. And so I am super excited to be a mom. And these are just a couple of questions that I think that you can start thinking about if you're prepping to be a mom as well. Or if you think there's other questions that I should have added to this list, drop them below so that that way I can prep accordingly.